Hi everyone, and welcome to the Hero's Journey, man. It's another session uh, where we are sharing some of that good stuff with all our heroes out there, you know. And speaking of a hero, man, this is if you're a mom, you're a dad, you know, you're a manager, you're a leader, wherever you are. And by default, if you have somebody looking up to you, if you've got somebody that sees you as somebody who can assist and help them, man, you are a hero. You know, you are a hero. And this podcast, this session is about us empowering um, sessions with you, tips and tricks, you know. And if you don't know that you've got greatness with you, listen, we are here to make sure that we drag it, kicking and screaming out of you. So, yes, welcome. Uh, men, on the show today, I've got Ricardo, Ricardo Fernandez. Uh, Ricky is a dear friend of mine. Um, he's a business consultant, he's a speaker, you know. Um, he's also a triathlete, you know. So, yeah, man, Ricky is an extraordinary person. And hence the reason why I said, you know what, I have to have him on the show. And hopefully we can have him on more episodes as we go, you know. So, Ricky, how's it, bro? Paul, it's, uh, it's a privilege and an honor. Firstly, um, yeah, I've been part of this journey with you, you know, prior to, to going live, you know, with these sessions yeah, that man. you hold. So firstly, it's a privilege and an honor to be to be part of it and, and you know, just to share, um, you know, the thoughts that we generally reflect off, off air, you know, the, the two, three hour chats we sit and we have and, and, you know, the sessions of yours are called The Hero's Journey and um, I hope that through yeah. Through these sessions that you awaken within people that each individual is a hero in their own right um just like you are to our friendship group and uh, just like your family is to us as well and um, so we are to you and, and vice versa and we have that accountability and responsibility towards each other so thank you for the, the invite on, on the show and uh, yeah i look forward to to what we unpack yo man ricky man i'm excited to have you man so so excited <laughs> um <laughs> so Man, today we are discussing or having a chat rather about human superpowers, you know, and the one that stands out for us today uh, is the power of perspective, you know, and this is a superpower that we have seen that each and every single individual has that possibility, that capability and capacity within them. And most notably, you know, we as a country, as South Africans, you know, we actually have the superpower, man. And just to paint a picture, you know, just to share with uh, 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 other heroes out there that are watching the, the podcast at the moment. Guys, we've been seeing, right, um, on social media, if you're on Twitter, you're not living under a rock, you know. <laughs> if you, <laughs> you know, if you've been on Twitter, if you've been on Facebook, man, at the least, if you've been watching your WhatsApp statuses, right, there's been these memes of, of cooking oil. Cooking oil, guys, I was just checking the stat the other day. Um, it has actually increased in price by more than 50%. You know, that, that's, that, 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 that's a hefty price increase, you know. And we can go on about that, about the geopolitical issues that are influencing this, you know, the war in Ukraine, COVID, and so, and, and so much. But, Ricky, as you and I were discussing, having a chat rather that, what really, you know... Um, kind of inspired this particular session this morning is how we as South Africans, you know, um, actually took it, took the price increase, flipped it on its head, you know, and saw it from a really funny perspective, you know, um, and, and that kind of influences how, you know, the, 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 the show, the, the podcast this morning comes to perspective, you know, that we literally have the power, you know, to look at any situation, whether it's a tragic situation, or whether you know it's something unfortunate but we seem to have this uncanny ability that you see the funny side almost of yep. everything and laugh about it and and just continue with it rick i don't know what are your thoughts on that man yeah i, I, I fully agree with you Paul, and i and i would say it, it can edge on the uh, point of danger when we become ignorant yep. in in humor but i think what mm. south africans do well is that the parameters um of a perspective is stretched because we are built mm. up of persistence and resilience so it's almost in mm. light of knowing a problem i'm able to make fun of the outcomes or what it currently is because i know i'm going to get out of it so you know i had mm. this saying that saying coming forward in my mind you were speaking about the cooking oil and the, the petrol meme south africans tend to find the me and the meaning in memes yep. 
and that is beautiful for me i wow. feel like not not necessarily everyone does that it's i'm willing to find where do i fit in this meme what is the meaning of this meme mm. and despite knowing the current impact it might have on me as an individual i'm built up of, of mm. unspoken resilience we are a resilient nature and out of persistence sure. we will persevere i was speaking earlier this week to to someone abroad and they'd never heard the term load shedding and i felt <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I felt like it was a Steve Harvey <laughs> show trying to explain and uh, I spoke yeah. to this individual and they're like what load what and I was like no this yeah. is, it's a specific time during the day when our electricity goes out and then I thought to myself yeah. these countries that don't really know what we go through beyond load shedding beyond potholes uh, beyond the cooking oil which is a global thing um uh, beyond yeah. uh, poor public service delivery uh, these countries that really don't know what we come up against but yet we are a resilient country yeah. and and these companies like discovery nando's but this these countries go go oh yeah um, so it's almost like the resilience in south africans build up a muscle that people across the world don't necessarily have and that attracts them to south africans as employees or as workers as well and generally as pioneers or founders across the globe so um, i really find it insightful to your point of perspective how do we look at these things and you know what makes us different when looking at a problem i believe it's our parameters and our ber- parameters are pushed out we don't limit ourselves to only this problem we resilient we you yeah. know we persevere and we can push past it and we solve it and we find innovative solutions um another individual mm-hmm. I was speaking to and, and then I'll hand over back to you for he told me that you know the sure. country he lives in is quite boring because there's no problems now i believe our yeah. perspective <laughs> our, our perspective wow. is formed by our problems the fact that we have a sure. crippled um health uh, nhi or health industry a uh, service delivery from a public sector perspective forces us sure. to rethink sure. and offer how can we bring health to your home as opposed to expecting people mm. i know people that personally that stood in a, a clinic uh, for two days trying to get help for a sore leg so the fact that we have to wait so long just to see a doctor in a country is a problem you you go abroad you go to europe mm. certain areas of europe you, you go to the doctor you see them in five minutes so based off these problems that we experience I, i do believe we have a great perspective and an opportunity to solve problems that could roll out globally although the problem doesn't necessarily exist there so yes perspective i think is important the parameters of our perspective if i can recap what does that uh, what is that created through our resilience and our persistence and then south africans specifically finding the me and the meaning in means is is quite um, is quite humorous for us all and gets us going right through this um high level of stress so what what did they refer to it as serotonin high level or oh, high levels of cortisol yeah. you know this this anxiety lifting up this yeah. just brings you man lightens the load for us as south african mm, mm, mm. um ricky there 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 is so much in, in that statement bro so just to kind of go back a bit you know uh you know on the group we we we, we had a chat about um being realistic and being optimist you know uh or, or pessimist rather. i think you said this this um this discussion rather on the group you know yes. and we kind of yeah, we, we we kind of uh, uh, reached if i could say you know um a, a sweet spot that we do need pessimists we do need uh optimists and we need realists as well you know but now how does this connect to being uh to to to, to perspective is that would you say that we as south africans or even as individuals you know when we choose to have let's say an optimistic outlook you know on a situation or you know on how things are would you say that we are being ignorant or how the situation is you know and just perhaps choosing to have a, a, a sort of wishy washy uh, outlook on it or, or or do those actually go hand in hand you know or do we need to first accept maybe that this is the situation as it is and then say you know what this is what I'm, i have at hand but then let me rather you know choose to see from a different perspective i don't know what what do you what, what are your thoughts on that 
Well, that's a very good question and a, quite a loaded answer. And depending uh, from which angle we're looking from a, a economic perspective or political perspective, my answer would differ. So I'm going to answer from a business specific perspective and how um, an individual own, owning a business lives in this country um, and looks at the problems we're experiencing. So to answer your question, I do believe that very often we choose a positive state of thinking because we know that the negative state of thinking will not do anything better than a positive state of thinking will do. So, you know, we, we mm. by default choose positive, Excuse me. despite whether it is <coughs> realistic. No problem, despite whether it is realistic or not. Yep. Um, I always reference Adrian Gore in this instance, uh, an individual who started Discovery uh, in the pre-apartheid times, if I'm not mistaken, in 1990, just fresh out of his actuary degree at Bitwatish Rand University. And, you know, sure. Discovery's taken the world by storm for its behavioral way of, of positioning insurance, um, different types of insurance. Adrian Gore, I don't think... I I've ever heard him, and now listen carefully, say anything yep. negative about the country and continue to speak negatively. So let me sure. let me give you the flip side of that. He says the negative that yeah. the thing that's perceived negatively, but is a fact, and then continues with the positive rhetoric that's expected to fix it. So I believe that is the outlook we should be taking. Is that the outlook everyone takes? No. no. I've worked in environments yeah. where unfortunately it's identifying problems and we live with the problem, but then we reiterate the problem being the problem for us not succeeding. I believe Discovery is a prime example of an organization who identifies the problem, which in this instance they would refer to as a fact. It is what it is. We suffer with load shedding. We suffer with a crippling sure. health system. These are the things that are. They exist as they are, and saying it any different would be lying. So it's not necessarily pessimistic. It's stating the fact. How we respond to that fact, do we respond in an optimistic manner or a pessimistic manner, I would say is the important thing. I don't think that uh, well-educated individuals like that miss the opportunity to identify the problem because that's where mm -hmm. that's where money lies, that's where the solutions lie, that's where opportunity lies. So I hope that answers your question. It's a little bit of a wayward, uh, but I do believe that South Africans yeah. choose positivity out of default because we don't really have a choice. You know, it's the, those who those who want to leave and can leave have left. Um, and are continuing to leave, but those who are remaining understand that you know we have to build up the resilience and persistence to fix the problems that exist here. Man, you 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 mentioned some some really powerful points there, bro. For instance, you know you spoke of you know the parameters that we have. You know we spoke about that we see the me in memes. You know, and yeah. yes, from a broad, from a broader perspective, you know we 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 have this sort of DNA as a country. You know, but then since we're seeing the me in the me, you know, I think to some extent, Ricky, we, we personalize it as well, you know, yeah. and in personal, in personalizing this, it's how individually, you know, we deal and handle uh, our problems, you know, and what really stands out, you know, just a couple of days ago, we had a game here in Bombela, you know, I think it was a rugby match, by the way, who was playing? Uh, the Pumas in the Western province. Oh, yes, the Pumas in the Western province, you know. And as you said earlier, you know, overseas, they don't know, you know, what is, like, load sharing. It's, it's a foreign concept to them, you know. And, you know, I was looking at the commentary, you know, when load sharing happened. Man, those commentators, they took it in their stride. Uh, you know, and, and they said, no, no shedding! No you know? shedding! <laughs> <laughs> you know, in that, you know, it, 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 it's an acknowledgement that this is a problem, you know? Yeah. This is a problem, we've got a load shedding problem, you know? It, it's acknowledging, you know? <laughs> and I, I, I would like to believe that. <laughs> You know, then the scene, the, the funny side of it, is what psychologists, you know, would call the reframing it, you know? They're seeing the problem for what it is, 
but then reframing it and putting it in a diff- into a different frame, you know. And speaking from my personal experience, Ricky, you know, um, would be that reframing a situation and changing perspective it opens up so many more options to the current challenge that you have that you didn't think you could see before you know mm-hmm. um to me it's kind of like like stepping back you know mm-hmm. when you're stepping back you you're able to see that you know what if i can't go through it i can go around it if i can't go around mm-hmm. it i can go underneath because if i can't go underneath i can go over it there's so many more you know but then just taking it directly to you you know if there's an entrepreneur who's watching this program right now, who's watching the session right now, if there's, you know, uh, someone out there who's starting a business, someone out there who's perhaps even has already started their business, you know, um, and they've got problems that they cannot solve, you know, they've got this massive ass challenge, man, you know, if you had to maybe break it down, you know, what steps, or maybe just one step for, for now, you know, what is the one thing that they can do that can stretch their perspective, maybe, you know, just help them to solve this problem that will just won't go away. So I I have three words and they are simplify, simplify, simplify. I think what we found in the the last five to 10 years is the tech space, what they've done really is that they've simplified. They've tried to solve one problem as opposed to 10. When you start living your life with more clarity, uh, you are able to uh, you are able to deliver actions that align with that clarity. If you're not clear about what your business is doing, or yourself as an individual with your life, you don't really know what you're going to do from the time you wake up to the time you sleep, or the time your front doors open of your shop till the time the doors close. So simplify, simplify, simplify. I had a high school um, rugby coach. He said, "Don't worry about the side shows." In rugby, what would the side shows be? What type of what type of togs are you wearing? Are you wearing a scrum cap? Are you not wearing a scrum cap? You know, are you wearing shoulder pads? Are you not? Those are all side shows. Getting on the field and making the tackle or kicking the ball and passing it correctly. Those are the fundamentals. Those are the things you need to do well. Mm. And the clarity is to win the game, is to have more points than your opponent. Obviously, within a business context, it would be to make more sales than there is expenses. How do you simplify or dumb down your business to such a point where you can say, these are the five actions that are contributing 80%. There's a principle called a Pareto principle, where 20% of your actions are contributing to 80% of your outcome. Oh, yes, I believe if, yes. if I believe if people simplify everything they do in life, you could hone down to that 20 and only focus on doing that 20% in 100% of your day and you will get more than just the 80% outcome. So that's Pareto's mm. principle. So if you haven't heard it, so to answer your question, Paul, the, the entrepreneur out there and the, and the corporate business out there is simplify, simplify, simplify. This thing of bringing legacy systems into the future is problematic from a financial perspective and just the, the resources required, be it a uh, financial resources or human resources, problems can be simplified and solved with simple solutions. So I hope that guides you. Um, A question I wanted to ask you though, is if we can go back to you, is you mentioned earlier taking a step back. So you you, you were speaking about, you know, we get stuck in a problem and then actually taking a step back and having a bigger picture. Now for individuals who are young, one or two individuals who have never done that, it's very challenging to practically understand how do you do that? Because, you know, we speak about it because we understand what we mean. We understand, you know, take Sorry. a two-day hiatus and, and hit out of town and take a paper pen. But practically, in your perspective or in your in your living, how do you take a step back? And I'm quite keen to learn from you there and, and get the bigger picture. Solution. Man, a simple thing is just stepping away from your desk, you know? A simple thing is just taking a walk outside. Man, it does work wonders 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 for me you know and just to share a, a, a personal story with the guys that are listening out there as well and with just you bro um, i'm currently uh, just honing my my skill when it comes to trading i'm learning to do forex trading um and in addition to me you know kind of working on my podcast as well the production is part of it i've had software that for a, an entire two to three days i i couldn't figure it out you know, and because perhaps I had something to do in the house, you know, 
um just those two days when i come back i'm like why this is so simple you know and it just I, i'm able to figure it out now yeah. that's just the first part of it the second part yeah this, the, the second part of it is this man and with, when it comes to this i'll also kind of sort of refer to the the, the, to the supply chain of the world as, as 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 it stands you know um as you said that you know we've got food shortages you know there's oil shortages you know over worldwide you know the cooking oil um analogy we just used and as i was doing some research i found that what i what i found interesting was that yes as of africa because people on twitter were questioning that but gents we 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 we, we make cooking oil as a country you know <laughs> why don't we <laughs> you know why don't we have <laughs> why are we running out of it you know and now what i found out was that we make 20 percent of what we need as a country and then the rest of that you know we import you know and it kind of goes back to your Pareto principle although in a, in, a, in a kind of a strange way you know so yeah. we import the rest of it now where it works for me bringing it to me is that 20 percent of my stepping back and gain and, and gaining perspective yes it's from me but yeah. the 80 percent tricky it comes from my friends it comes from my support system from my siblings it comes from yeah. from reading you know it yeah. comes from hearing different stories you know so that's where my 80 percent comes in you know it comes to stepping back and looking at it from a different perspective and mm-hmm. hence the reason why one of the things that you, you always talk about and this has stuck with me you always say that exposure you always say this word exposure you know that exposure is so so important because exposure it it, it, it exposes you to different perspectives it, it exposes you to different uh, 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 approaches to, to to going about a problem man you know so those mm-hmm. two things for me i know uh, those two things they make a massive difference for me yeah if i can if i can add to that my beautiful girlfriend raquel would say she would say exactly what i'm going to yeah. say now it's like we don't know what we don't know yeah. and that, that is always the challenging yeah. part because we seek knowledge but but we don't actually know if we could simplify it, what stream of knowledge we're seeking. Therefore, to your point, if we could take a step back and get perspective, ask yourself the top 10 things you want out of life. And if we dumb it down, like I said, we can speak about spirituality. What do I want out of my spiritual life? Physicality, mentality. What do I want to give back to society? What do I want to do you know, financially? What, do I, what position do I want to be in? And actually ask these questions about yourself. Oh. And, and don't don't limit yourself to writing write you know choose physicality and write i want to be 70 kgs i want yeah. to run it tra- i want to be to run a marathon i want to do this and when you're done with all these you know these top 10 things physicality mentality society your romance life you know you've got this top 10 headings yeah. and once you've jotted them all down decide on two yeah. decide on two physically <laughs> i want to do two things I want to be 70 and I want to do a triathlon. Done. That's the next 12 months focus. But, and I think that's how we can get perspective on things as well. Again, what am I doing? I'm simplifying it. Yeah, you know, you might say financially, what what do I want out of my finances? You might say, I want to be a millionaire. All right. One, I want to be a millionaire, right? What does that require of me to do? There's three steps. Focus on the three steps. If one of them don't work, change them. If you need to add one, add one. If you need to take one away, take one away. One of them is definitely going to be uh, saving more than I spend and living within sure. my means. And these are mantras that one can say over and over to yourself. And these biblical, um, uh, these biblical sort of uh, reinforcement uh, stories, if we can call it that, or, or verses that you also need to go through to, to better understand these components. So I think to your point earlier, from a perspective when it relates to business, uh, or just the country as a yeah. whole, it's like, what, what, what do I want out of living in South Africa, in Johannesburg, in Ilovo, Santa? Like, what, what do I really want from this place that I'm living in now? And if it doesn't fulfill the need that I have, why am I living here? You know, then, then move. Yeah. Uh, so I think not everyone has that luxury of choice, and I, I fully understand that luxury of choice is not sure. available to everyone, but we do have the choice within the choices that we have. So if your choice yeah. is only to, I uh, have to choose between rice and bread, and you can choose between the two, and under physicality, 
Health is an important one. Then choose rice as opposed to bread. Sure. So these are on on uh, on a more granular scale questions to ask yourself uh, and to frame your perspective practically. A, a saying that I like as well is: if it can yeah. be measured, it can be managed. If you cannot ah. measure it, it cannot be managed. Ah, yeah. So if we if we are practically speaking, silly example, but I get on a scale every Monday morning. So uh, it's not that I yeah. care about my weight per se. It's just I I want to sure. know relative to last week what my weight is now, and I want to know if yeah. I look a little bit round in the mirror. Why do I look a bit round this week? Is because I'm three four kgs up because it was Christmas and there was trifle and all that thing, nice things. Um, is what can be measured can be managed. Same thing with your bank account and the money that comes in and out can be measured, can be managed. Um, same thing with your exercise. If you exercise at a specific cadence, at a specific heart rate for a specific duration of time, it can be measured. There will be improvement. So in order to improve anything, it must be measured. Um, I'm not saying that there's instances where things aren't measured that it improves. There's that likelihood of you in the right industry at the right time, and it's just a progressive growth, like the ESG um, sort of focus uh, in the markets now from an investment perspective and a practical perspective, or just the tech industry that's you know it's just booming, and we don't know what's going to happen in that industry in the next 10 to 20 years. But beyond those industries, in normal life, if you want to progress yeah. and have a, a different perspective, a new perspective. Yeah, stepping back, but then getting back into practice is critical and measuring your, your practice um, and holding yourself accountable. I think measuring is the simple part. Applying yourself is the challenging part to stay within the framework of what you are measuring. Um, so discipline, you know, discipline and, and uh, persistence um, in the process of, of measuring and managing. Yeah, and, and and which in turn build that resilience we spoke of, that persistence, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what I found, sorry, important before I just go back to you, sure. is I found that it's a little bit like a snowball. So if I'm in a, a habit, okay, of good habits, yeah. it's easier for me to continue with these good habits. If I'm in a habit of no habits, it's generally a bad habit, actually. And it's very challenging to get out. So I found like when my training's going well, so there's two components to me. It's like when it's going well, it's going really well. And then I continue to do well, like in every area. And then when it's not going well, I tend to sleep 30 yeah. minutes, 40 minutes longer, which has never really been a problem. But I do find myself nowadays, um, you know, in that possible cycle of, ah, it's just an extra 30 minutes sleep. You know, it's just Portuguese class for yourself and, and this little thing that you're missing out on. 30 minutes is not going to kill. 30 minutes over 30 days is a problem. We don't see 30 minutes in one day as a problem. So having that yeah. discipline to maintain what you, you're measuring, you know, at the end of the day allows you to manage it. And it's not simple. How do we combat that accountability partners is one. Um, having different individuals for different areas in your life. Your spiritual friend might not be mm -hmm. your physical friend. <laughs> you know, the guy who helps you in the gym, he might not be your spiritual friend, but he's good at physical. So let's um, find out from him what he's done. And preferably each person in each sphere of your life will be better than you, right? You don't want someone to, to take yeah. you backwards and you want to mentor people who, you know, feel that you could be their um, spiritual person, you know, they, they go to to discuss this or, or their finance person. You, you really want to be that for people as well. But I'm saying the deliberate choice of who you choose to um, attach to in an instance where you are seeking this improvement and new perspective um, etc do you find yourself more looking at different people for different areas of your life yeah okay that, that is so true man and in, in this particular instance you know i won't go far from home um my siblings my younger brothers and sisters There's a i need um very practical advice Practical advice, somebody that won't give me any stuff, no BS, you know. I'm gonna go to my to my baby brother Mohau, you know. He's one of a guy, um, he's 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 very analytical, he's straightforward, you know. Um, if I need encouragement, if I need somebody who's gonna talk to my heart, I go to to spy. That's my younger brother who comes after me, you know. And if I need a, a, a balance of the practical and 
spiritual, you know, I go to do me. That's my younger sister. You know, she's very spiritual but very practical at the same time. You know, so Ricky, I do have this support system, you know, and again, it then extends, for instance, with you, you know, business, spiritual, you know, you and I share so many interests together. So I do have specific people, yeah. Ricky, and now the discipline then comes here, you know, that to be honest with yourself, to be honest with yourself, to be real with yourself, that, you know, this is the type of advice I need. Yeah. Not the advice, type of advice that I want or would like to yeah. hear or would love to hear, you know. So they again come to discipline, you know, they again, you know, they're, 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 they're being real and then saying, you know, I'm being realistic, I'm thinking of a situation for what it is, you know, this is yeah. the perspective that I need. So definitely, I, I do have that support system. Yeah, that's critical. Um, at the end of the day, without that support system, what we'll just find ourselves doing is latching on to previous knowledge. So uh, T.D. TD Jake says it so well, he says, new level, new devil. The problem is when, ah, yes. we surround us, when we surround ourselves with ourselves, we tend not to get to a new level. Mm. So we don't even experience mm. a new new devil. So we feel, and I think we should be afraid of that to an extent. I'm not saying we shouldn't feel peace, but I'm saying yeah. that we should be concerned when we are comfortable. Uh, so comfort should equal concern because when we are left alone, we assume that the devil uh, is happy with what we're doing. So it's generally when we're experiencing trials and tribulations of sorts um, that we are trying to do some good work and, and to spread some good news. So I'm, I'm glad that you have individuals around you that are able to contribute um, you know, to you in a meaningful and valuable way in areas of your life that are important to you. So that's critical. Nice. Mm. Great. Mm. Mm. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely. Man, guys, thank you for having us today. Um, and we be just uh, uh, wrapping up the podcast. Uh, one of the things that Ricardo really just like really summed up very beautifully is that the, the challenges that we go through, the trials and tribulations that we go through, you know, they stretch us. They stretch us. They are the ones that actually challenge us to find a different perspective. You know, I mean, we are on this journey of life. You know, there's so many challenges we go through, either at home, either at, at work, either in the idea or the business that you are now. You know, it's been an idea and now you would like to execute it. You know, it needs to go into action. You know, and now you're looking for options. You're looking for solutions on how to do it, you know. And that in itself, that's stretching you. That in itself, you know, you know, uh, there's this quote that I love also that, you know, the blessing is in the challenge. The blessing is in yeah. the trial, you know. Yeah. Um, and in that trial, you know, more than just the monetary uh, gains we have, but your growth as a hero, you know, which ultimately also benefits those people that are around you. People that look up to you, you know, when you grow, they grow also. But yeah. the yeah. reality is that you when you're going through these challenges, it's not, you know, people seeing Kumbaya and you're seeing flipping, you know, <laughs> unicorns, you know. The reality is that it's a tough situation. But then yeah. we as leaders, we as heroes out there, and staying with it and sticking with it. And sticking with it simply means also that stepping back, gaining perspective, stepping back, you know, naming your problem, naming the issue, being specific about it, you know. Yeah. And from there, making a choice, you know. And after you've made that choice, you know, there's the discipline. And which I dare say, guys, it comes over time. Discipline comes over time. And this discipline now, so you simplify, 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 you, you, you really break it down. But Ricky, I don't know from yourself, man, any last words to, to the heroes out there, to the moms, to the dads, to the single parents, the single dads and moms, the business leaders out there, the hustlers on the street, man, to that person who's sitting and saying, you know what, I know I've got this dream out of me, I've got this greatness, but I can't seem to get out of it. What are the last words that can, some of them can, they can just package, man, and just take it to the bank? I would say positive persistence pays. And I would take that forward into their daily lives. It's like positive persistence pays. Not once, not twice. It needs to be continual. From now, you need to make a decision till the day you die that there's going to be a nature of positivity. Um, it's not ignorance, like we spoke earlier. It's an identification of a fact. And the fact might be negative or positive, but your choice and outlook on it needs to be positive. So three lasting words is positive persistence pains. 
Yeah. Brad, sir, I'm taking you to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, sir, for appreciate uh, inviting me onto onto your show. It's been great. Man, Ricky, man, it's been a pleasure having you, man. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, to the guys again, guys, please comment. Please for, don't forget to comment. Uh, comment below, guys. Let us know what you think of it. If there's any other topic that you'd like us to, to cover, anything that you, are, you, know, that you feel challenged with, that you'd like us to assist you with, man, please let us know. That's one. Two, don't forget to subscribe as well, guys. Don't forget to like the video because the more you do that, the YouTube gods will honor us, you know, and, 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 and show this, this content to more other people that are out there that are looking for it. So, yeah, man, once again, Thank you so much. Remember, remember, remember that you are the hero of your story. Ka! Ka!